I think the first priority for government policy on children with special needs is that the system should be built around the needs of the child rather than the child having to uh, have their provision built around the rigidities of the system. Way back when, 20 years ago, when I was involved in remodelling special educational provision in Warwickshire, you know, we started off with a, an absolute division between children with special, with severe needs and moderate needs and in mainstream school. And what we did was build a whole range of provision right from full-time uh, 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 severe learning difficulties right through to small amounts of classroom support. And I was very proud of that change. And I think that that principle, which is the system has got to be built around the needs of the child, is the most important uh, principle. I think the second uh, point is that we should recognise that special educational provision is not a kind of um, uh, Cinderella service. It's not um, uh, that, firstly, it's obviously it's extremely important, uh, but secondly, that actually mainstream schools or mainstream education can learn a lot from what is best about special educational needs, and arguably the whole agenda about personalisation was more developed in special schools, had to be more developed in special schools because the particular range of needs those children had before it moved into mainstream schools. But also that special schools have understood the complex, multiple, plural nature of children's abilities and have needed to understand more in a, more, in a fuller way how you could uh, capture children's efforts and attainment beyond a more narrow academic focus because you're working with children who are unlikely ever to succeed in that narrow academic way it requires you to take a more holistic view of the child and I personally think that's the way in which mainstream schools uh, should be going um, as well and I think finally it's important for government to somehow balance the need for local variety in provision because that is the route to innovation if everywhere does the same thing, there won't be any innovation and improvement. But at the same time, parents, particularly parents who've got children with special needs who have to face all sorts of other kind of issues in their lives, need some kind of clarity. And therefore, you have got to have some uh, strategy in relation to the fact that in one area a child will receive a statement, in another area they won't. So somehow you've got to balance up those things which need to be reasonably uniform across the system with the encouragement um, of local variation. And I think the final, if I was to add one more thing without it seeming pious, I think it would be that um, whenever we talk about special educational provision for, uh, for children with special needs, we should always see it as being something which has got a great deal to add to mainstream education. Um, you know, I saw, just to take one small example of this, in my own experience, the way in which effective integration of children with special needs in mainstream schools really helped to shape the culture of those schools as environments which were tolerant and collaborative. Um, and so uh, it's not special education is not a problem to be solved by a system that would rather focus on children who didn't have special needs. It is a, a, way, a form of insight and it's a resource for the education system as a whole.